Good morning, my beautiful merfolk. Welcome to a Mercedes. I don't. I still don't know what I'm calling these, but we are going to be re looking into the Reddit anti-MLM community and some posts that I have grabbed from there while I just get ready for the day at 1 p.m. So that's where I'm at. This post is labeled insert eye roll here. Um, and it is posted like the original post was from a Plexus, someone in Plexus. I was going to say Plexus Hun, but I don't know. I don't care to use the like Hun verbiage. It's whatever. Um, to each their own. My skin is very thirsty because it's just soaking this right up. This says, let's talk about the elephant emoji in the room. I bought. Um, I'm someone who actually loves using emojis, so I, I cannot pick on people in MLMs for using emojis because girl same. Like, I don't know if it's a generation thing or just I'm too much like these. Puns. Whatever happened to family slash friends supporting their loved ones in their small business? Any business. Small business, side business, fun business, side hustle, whatever. But sadly, the truth is, your family and friends will be the last people to support you, even if you always have their best interest at heart. By supporting them, I don't mean buy whatever they're selling. I mean share a post, shout them out, tell them how proud you are of them. Be a friend. Because honestly, at the end of the day, me, personally, I am going to succeed in Plexus regardless of your support or not because that's the mindset I have. And that friend with that small business that they love, they are going to succeed with or without your support too. But banishing them is getting you absolutely nowhere. That business pays their bills and helps feed their family. And that has nothing to do with you. Just promise me that when I'm no longer clocking in for an eight to five job and you are, you won't be mad. Please, you emoji. Well, I told you I'll play Pokemon with you when I'm all done, baby squirrel. Mom. Babe. Okay. Hashtag support your small business. Hashtag be a friend. So, all right, let's unpack this step by step, shall we? Whatever happened to friends, family, supporting their loved ones in their business. Um, I think it is super important to support friends, family, and loved ones and their business ventures. I do think um, people should know that supporting someone in their business does necessarily mean you don't need to purchase from them. Really likes, comments, shares go a long way in helping people spread the word about their business, reach new customers, reach new audiences and fans, etc. Um, so I do think that is important to point out. How, however, an MLM is, in my opinion, a scam. So yeah, why would I be supporting somebody in an MLM business who's probably going to try to recruit more people into their business um, where 99% of the people either lose or don't make any money, according to the FPC? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. So, sorry, babe. Unfortunately, though, it seems like, you know, they themselves don't have, like, any support. On one side, I'm glad that people are not sharing um, their posts about Plexus and, like, not getting hoodwinked into joining her team, on the other hand. It is sad if that being the case is making her either feel isolated or cut off friendships and relationships with family and loved ones because that typically what happens in MLMs if, you know, someone doesn't support you or they don't agree with your decision to be in an MLM, it's they're called a hater and you're told to cut them off, uh, which is very unfortunate. But it does go into, into my opinion, how MLMs can operate as cults because then they are cutting off their 
relationships with like any outside influences who don't agree with the MLM. So it's making it so that their friend group is now like solely like the MLM. So it raises the stakes higher there to leave the MLM because now they have cut off everybody else. Thank you for my Pokemon. Raises the stakes because now they've cut off all their other friends and family and all their friends and family that they now have are in the MLM and if they are to leave the MLM they are probably going to lose those friends and family so it makes them stay in longer. Anyways, then she goes on to say, but banishing them is getting you absolutely nowhere. Are they banishing you or are you banishing them because they don't agree with you? That's what I really want to know. That business pays their bills and helps feed their family, and that has nothing to do with you. Well, according to the FTC, only 1% is actually making money in MLMs. So is it really paying your bills is my question. At the end of the year, when you do your profit and loss statement, how much money have you really made? Second, she goes on to say that when I'm no longer clocking in for eight to five job, uh, you know, you can't be mad or whatever. Um, so that means you are still working in eight to five because she didn't say nine to five. She said an eight to five job. So I guess your MLM is not making you that much money, is it? No, because you still have to work. So, okay. <laughs> Let's look at some of these comments. Like this one, it's true. You won't be clocking in eight to five job. You'll be clocking in every minute of every waking hour job, which is so true. It is known, at least for the anti-MLM community. And if you are new, hi. But typically, working in an MLM takes up all of your time. I kind of equate it to like when I was working full time as an influencer, literally took all my time. I was constantly on my phone. I was constantly saying to my kids, hold on, mommy is working. And like my daughter started to like pretend to be working on her phone like mommy was. But I was like, it wasn't like I had set work hours. I was literally just doing this like all the time like commenting liking posts creating content editing content like literally took up all my time and so if you think about it when you're an m and mlm typically they encourage you to advertise on social media so you are a full-time influencer basically and you're also doing zoom calls you're doing opportunity calls you're recruiting, you are sending DMs and constantly trying to get more people into your downline so that you can create more money. And so when when does it stop? When when do you stop? When do you clock out? Never. Okay, so we have a Kirby vacuum review. This is gonna be a longer one. Okay, okay, so recently I got into a deep dark hole reading Kirby vacuum reviews on consumer affairs and how they are something else. One in particular that I just read jumped out at me. I just don't understand how someone could let this happen to them. Do people not know you can call the cops on salespeople like this and have them removed? Normally, I would call the police non-emergency number if they destroyed my stuff. Like in the story below, I would effing call 911. Anyways, on to the story. The... And remember, this is not my story. So this is not the Reddit poster story. This is something that they found on uh, the Consumer Affairs website on reviews about Kirby Vacuum. Two years ago, a young gentleman came to my home asking if he could clean one room in my home to help him win some contest. I told the gentleman, no. <laughs> because I was busy with my daycare and the kids were sleeping. Oh my gosh, she's running a daycare. Oh my gosh, how many kids does she have in the house? Uh, uncomfortable, if you can't tell. Because <laughs> it's like she's not only responsible for if she has her own kids, but also other people's kids. So it's like, 
This is already getting into uncomfortable territory. I did not read this beforehand. There's just a Kirby vacuum review story. Well, let's go. And so now, and now here we are. The gentleman left and came back 30 minutes later with his boss, again asking, I said, no, I am busy and closed the door. They ended up waking up all five kids I was watching. So of course the kids were cranky. They are all sick. And when my dogs get scared, they pee. So, of course, I was trying to clean that up. Oh, my goodness, this poor woman. An hour later, a young lady came to the door with the same boss as the guy before. Oh, my gosh. I said, I'm not interested in buying anything. The girl insisted she was only there for this said contest and only wanted to clean the room. Well, after being annoyed from the kids being cranky, dogs peeing on my floor, and annoying salespeople coming to my door, I caved and allowed her to clean the room, figuring it was helping me to get everything cleaned up. I mean, I get that, but again, like, having five kids in the house and then letting, like, some strangers in, uh, I would not be comfortable doing that. And if I were, like, one of these kids' parents, I would not be comfortable, like, knowing about this she took three hours to clean a small playroom oh my god she first asked to use my vacuum cleaner in which she accidentally broke then she used my steam cleaner again she accidentally broke both totaling to together seven hundred dollars what this is supposed to be like a kirby vacuum like sales pitch right so why is she using your and your steamer and she accidentally broke it I would be livid I've only had them for a year and nothing was wrong with them earlier that morning so already I'm angry and telling her to leave well I, yeah clearly her boss then shows up and apologizes and said she was new and went on about using the Kirby on my bed it completely ruined my mattress oh my after he apologized again and says, no worries, you can deduct that, I said, I wasn't buying. He kept giving me all these offers and I told him, no. My fiance called me and I was telling him what had happened and said the boss was on his phone and told me his boss wanted me to fill out a complaint form and said he would have everything replaced that they broke and ruined. I was fill As I was filling it out, I noticed the end it said buyer's signature I told him I wasn't signing the boss went outside leaving the young woman behind and came back in with his shoes on now the carpet they just cleaned has mud prints everywhere he told me his boss will knock it down to 700 since they broke so many things I still said no he became very pushy saying that he wouldn't want my children or my daycare kids rolling in filth calling us dirty so i said forget it and bought it to get him out since now i don't have a vacuum or steam cleaner thanks to them honestly i would have done the same thing i'm like at this point i i probably would have bought it just so i had something so i could clean my house that they've literally destroyed like oh my god well, now, I mean, I guess I could go on Amazon, but, like, I, too, would have felt, like, so pressured, like, at this moment. I actually have a similar kind of story that I want to talk about. Um, I'm going to try to save it for another video because I want to, like, really get into it. Maybe I'll try and find some, like, other reviews and situations similar to mine. Just scammy practices. Uh, and I really hate, like, pushy sales tactics. And, like, this is, like, just beyond, like, a pushy sales tactic. Like, they literally went to her house, broke her stuff, ruined her bed, her carpet. Like, this is insulted her and the kids. Absolutely insane. As he was filling out the papers, the young woman left me with the used demo. They took my broken vacuum and broken steam cleaner. Why? Why did they take your stuff? The boss handed me the papers, and I was looking it over before signing anything. They both look out the door. They completely lied, saying I was only paying them $700. They charged me $1,600. I called the number they gave me to cancel everything, and it was a disconnected number. Oh, my gosh. This is 
insane. These people are a fraud. I have no idea how to use this piece of ish. And they stole my money and there is no way of getting it back. And they ruined my personal belongings. This story is absolutely insane. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. Like, let's, let's look at some comments. All right, so here's one comment from somebody who used to work for Kirby, so this should be interesting. Oh man, I used to work for Kirby when I was a student who was living on loans. They treat their salespeople like ish. My boss told me I'd get $1,500 if I did 30 demos as a part-time employee. 30 demos is a lot. And considering how long that one girl was at the house for like hours. Also, like we had someone come I actually want to say it was a rainbow vacuum, not Kirby. Is, is, there, is there a difference? Let me Google this. Rainbow is another door-to-door -door, um, sale uh, company, I guess. Um, so we had someone come in for rainbow, and we actually still have the, like, little, like, water purifier. Like, it's an air purifier, but it's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> how to describe it i got it for free like i filled out a little form at like a fair and then in order to get it we had to schedule a demo pretty much and the guy was here for hours so just doing one demo like literally takes hours so to do 30 of these is a lot it's a lot of work and not just the hours that it takes to do a demo, but then all the time that it would take to find someone who is willing to set up a demo with you. And yeah, if you're go literally going door to door, it's way too much. It's way too much work. I've done door to door and it is, I, I, think, I think all door to door are freaking scams, but that's it. It's, go look up my, um, my personal, like, MLM Horror Stories, I will link that video for you here, and you can see what my experience was like, and it's just bonkers. Anyways, my boss told me I'd get $1,500 if I did 30 demos as a part-time employee, even if there weren't a sale. She <laughs> neglected to tell me that I had to get them in 30 days. I took a couple of days off work because I had the flu. Since I didn't meet my quota, I had taken 32 days to get the 30 demos. I was not getting paid. Ridiculous. I just worked for free. Supposedly not illegal since we're self-employed. The days were really long, too. We'd been taken in a van. The surrounding towns dropped off, and then we had to wander the streets with our vacuum trying to get people to let us in. I also hated the way we were supposed to pressure people. In three months, I made only one sale, and I kept failing to meet my quota. When my when month four came around, I drove to the office and told them to F off F Kirby. Yeah, that is messed up. I'm so surprised that this commenter actually did this for four months, basically working for free for four months. I am so sorry to that person. Like, they probably didn't feel like they had, like, many other options. I'm sure it was sold as, like, an opportunity that was going to be a lot easier than it was, um, which is typically how MLMs and these kinds of scams go. All right, let's look at the next comment. OMG, I had a Kirby salesperson in my house, like, 15 years ago. He said the thing about the contest, and I felt bad, but he wouldn't leave. I had to get really mean to get this person out of my house. My neighbor wasn't so lucky. She got bamboozled into buying one and paid full price, too. Yikes. Yikes. I don't get that part either. Why the F would anyone care about the salesperson's chances at a vacation? What about my vacation? I love that. I don't know. I was caught off guard. They prey on people wanting to be polite and helpful, I guess. I was younger and less willing to slam the door in people's faces. It was a skill I wish I had learned sooner in life. That's the thing, too. Like, once you, like, get them to open the door, I mean, the whole point is to get them to let you in. And they, I'm sure, are learning lots of different sales tactics to do just that. Like, when I worked door-to-door, -door, learned a lot of 
a lot of like tactics to again try to either get in the house or just keep them with the door open and you just keep talking you're trying to like mimic their body language like nodding your head you're talking about oh well i just sold to susie down the street like there's there's just lots of different ways so i'm not surprised that like they ended up you know letting them in um i mean that's like the whole point and yeah it's a prey on your vulnerability so my my rule for you and for anybody watching is you just don't open the door <laughs> like if i if you have not texted me to tell me that you are coming and you are not the delivery man do not knock or ring my doorbell because i am not coming to say hello that is that a kirby vacuum salesman came to our house when i was 15 back in 1996 my mom let him in for his pitch and let him hang around for some reason for a few moments it was just me and him standing in the kitchen suddenly he picked up our cat and threw the cat at me i was shocked luckily i caught the cat I thought, holy ish, this guy is an effing weirdo. I wanted nothing more to do with him. Thankfully, we didn't see that guy anymore after that. As far as I remember, we did not buy the vacuum. That story is just bizarre. I don't have anything to say about it. That's just really weird. <laughs> really, really weird. I attempted to sell Kirby vacuums. I was 20 and dumb. I lasted one day. I had a panic attack while attempting to do an in-home demo, and it's a bit cultish. Though I did get a FWB and, and weed contact out of my short-lived career as a door-to-door -door vacuum cleaner saleswoman, lol. That is funny. Um, I think that was like kind of what happened with me when I was doing door-to-door, -door. so I trained for a while, so I was doing it with somebody and the moment that they told me I was going to be going and doing it alone I pretty much had a panic attack I like went to the bathroom and trigger warning for eating disorders and bulimia I said this in my video but the only thing I could think to do was to make myself throw up and um, I tried I could not do it I just ended up, I pretended that I threw up, which was enough to get me out of it for the day. But like literally the moment I realized I was going out on my own, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle the thought. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know what type of person you have to be to be able to like handle doing door to door. Like you have to be a super tough person because people will be really, can be really mean. And also it can be like really dangerous, especially I'm not saying it can't be dangerous for men too, but I feel like especially as a young woman, um, I was like barely 21 or something. So like, especially as a young woman, going door to door is just, in my opinion, not safe. Next comment said like, they had a vector marketing, you know, Cutco tried to recruit me when I was in college. I went to the interview and I noped the F out. Yeah, I've gotten like tons of stuff for, uh, vector when I was younger and like in college and right out of college um I never finished college but because I was in college I got like a bunch of that stuff for vector marketing and I just remember my roommate at the time she was older she was like don't do it she's like it is a scam she's like I went and I did it and they made me just like work like all day <laughs> Like, she went for an interview, and she ended up working for them for the day, didn't get paid. Like, she went home, and her husband's like, where have you been? <laughs> like, so, yeah, scam. My husband worked for Kirby, too, at 19 years old for about two months. They had him working 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week. That's kind of like what I did. Absolutely insane. My husband would get charged for cleaning solution they used if he didn't sell anything that week. That is crazy. I could always see the cult vibes you mentioned because there was always one guy on the team that made like 100k a year selling vacuums. And of course, they played up the newer salespeople. My husband still feels horrible 
for how his boss made him be so pushy with people that clearly didn't want to pay $1,500 plus for a stupid vacuum. Oh, so this was a reply to a comment that got removed. And I saw a few other comments saying that this isn't, um, either isn't an MLM or isn't a scam. Well, I'm assuming that this one maybe said it isn't a scam. I saw some other comments that said that this isn't an MLM. And then I'm assuming that maybe this one said something about it, like, not being a scam. And so we're going to read the comment replying to the comment that was removed. I know that kind of sounds not as productive, but oh well, that's what we're doing because this is my channel, my video. So what you want, fight me. Don't really, though. Reply to the comment that was deleted says, nah, they are. They're just not able to have Huns do it over Facebook. Yeah, so that was the thing I told you I had. Like, we had a rainbow rep in our house. And they, like, don't have, like, any social media. But they had me just, like, post something. They did have me, like, post something on Facebook. Just, like, about getting that, like, free purifier or whatever. But I don't think I said anything about Rainbow in that post. They had a post made, so I just like copy and like pasted the text and then just shared like a picture of us with the product. Weird. Oh, look, I'm sure it's still up, so I'll look and include that in this video. Edit to add info. Entry sales people like I was were dealers. Oh, well. And then the person who managed us had the rank slash title dealer power specialist. That's weird. She didn't have to go out and do sales, just drive us to sell. So like their boss, basically. Kind of like what we heard in the in the story, how the girl was came after the guy. So obviously the boss drove both of them for the sales and then went in to, when they couldn't finish her job or whatever. Above her was the boss of our unit, and I have no idea what his title was, to be honest. It was so, it was so long ago. It doesn't look like a modern MLM, as they are done all, as they are done all over social media, because these outfits have office space and legitimate presence and a place you go every day as a base of operations with a receptionist and all that kind of thing. It's still basic it's still the basic pyramid model though. I think I still have my first sale keychain and my 10 sales K pin somewhere. It, this is again what I talked about in my gosh, my video when I did door to door sales. We had an office. We had a receptionist and I think the receptionist could al also did sometimes go out into the field and do sales herself. Because at first I was like, how do I get her job? And then I realized that she also went out and did sales. And I was like, mm, no thanks. Um, and then I noped out of there. It was literally right next to the unemployment office. So that's funny. But yeah, so it looks legitimate on the outside. But it was like like any other MLM. It was super culty, super sketch. And it did have like the pyramid structure. Um, and they did all the things like oh my gosh this could make you rich you know you just have to sell and again it was for a it was for a legitimate company but we didn't work directly for that legitimate company so we were still like in a way we were still 1099 employees it's it's, it's real <laughs> weird y'all <laughs> super weird super sketch someone commented under that and said yeah but do they make you buy your own inventory to sell do you only get paid off of your sales or do you get a base salary plus commission just because they have a hierarchy of people in the sales department doesn't make it an mlm well, I, yeah i guess like a regular sales job but like this is not a regular sales job and neither was mine so that's why i'm like yeah commission only no base pay same and no, you don't buy your inventory. The income of levels above the salespeople definitely comes entirely from the sales alone. So having a team under a team under a team with all the income generated by the sales level is that structure. Nobody in the chain is getting a base salary. The receptionist was normally employed, but I suspect the callers were in a pay by lead situation. 
not cookie cutter at all, but it definitely has the flavor in my opinion. They also hid the nature of the business in favor of the person, person presentation and hype. Kirby was well known as the poopy job you ended up exposed to when you were struggling. That's kind of like how it was for me. I, I look like a clown here, but I tell you, in real life, this is giving. It is giving. I can definitely agree to and relate to this, as I also worked in what I think might have been a MLM type scam that I've never seen covered, I've never heard talk about. I need to look and see if I can find anybody who has been in a similar situation as me. I might be posting in the Reddit thread later. So that'll be another video, I'm sure. Let's see what else we have as I finish this up. Bellamy, Omni Marketing. Oh yeah, I wanted to talk about this. So let's read this. Um, if you've been in this industry before, you know getting in early has its perks. That's right, because if you get into an MLM early, um, that's when you can make the most money because then you can be the one with the giant downline and make money off the backs of your people. I see you, girl. I see you. I think it early has its perks, but it can be a gamble to, a gamble, a gamble <laughs> to know if the company will succeed. That is true. Look at um, some of our new startups like Elamir or what was the other one? Awakened. Never really made it off the ground and were paying their people before they ever got product. So pyramid scheme in my opinion. Many starting companies also offer share pools or corporate access to those who are considered founders and those doors typically only open for the first ones in. One of the reasons I fell in love with the idea of Omni, <laughs> making Omni just sound like its own business, which it's not. It's so freaking, so funny. Anyway, one of the reasons I fell in love with Omni is because they went against the status quo. They are constantly debunking this with one of those being, you have to get in early to succeed. Starting January for or January, wow. July 1st, which is this month that I am recording, actually, because I'm recording these in July in hopes of getting them out end of August, early September, when my kids go to school. But in July 1st, they are giving the field the ability to earn shares in the company. I heard the leader say yesterday, I was hesitant to come to Bellamy at first because the lie I told myself they were already established and I wouldn't have the same connections to corporate level of influence or opportunities. I couldn't have been more wrong or absolutely correct. You didn't miss the mark, my friend. The concept of Omni is less than two years old and we are pioneering this ship. Nothing is off the table. I'm talking the discussion of staple pieces like foundations and the possibility of adding in creams along with our liquid foundation. Militia shared nothing is off the table. Wow, you just said that. What a blessing for so many leaders to have the ability to be an extension of corporate and to scale Omni marketing to new heights because Bellamy is innov innovative and forward thinking. It's always just the beginning here. So first, Omni marketing is not that new and all it means is that they're opening more channels of sales. So like taking Bellamy to stores it just means like less like opportunities and customers for reps of Bellamy for the people in the MLM side of Bellamy. So fail. <laughs> this comment just says the concept of Omni is less than two years old. No, it's not. Um, that, ladies and gents, is it for today's video. I have gotten ready. To you, I look like an absolute clown. To me, I look like a gorgeous little fairy nymph Mercedes with her 
cute mushroom earring. That is all I have for today's video though. I gotta go play with my daughter. I told her that we could play Pokemon together so I don't know what that is actually going to entail for us or what Pokemon we're gonna play but we're gonna go play together. Hopefully next time I record I have better lighting in here. Love y'all. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you in the next video. Be sure to like drop your comments below let me know your thoughts on some of these stories let me know your thoughts on the like kirby um door-to-door -door, just door-to-door -door, like sales companies in general below and i will see you in my next video so have a great one bye